Hello everyone and welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about grappling with regards to medieval combat. Uh, over the last 16 years that I've been fighting, I have entered into a few tournaments uh, where full grappling was was allowed. Uh, two, tucks, two chucks tournaments, uh, Empire Medieval Pursuits, uh, great organizations. I've also, um, you know, have done unofficial practices where uh, grappling was involved. So um, I, I managed to learn a few things. Um, now, usually when you're doing um, practices or tournaments where grappling uh, is involved, you're, you're using gauntlets because you're going to be um, you're going to be using you know weapons. That, that you can hold with two hands, or you can go one-handed, or you can switch out to different uh, types of weapons. Uh, so for that reason, uh, we typically don't use half gauntlets, because if you have a half gauntlet um, and you get hit, I mean, your finger's going to get broken. With regards to gauntlets, right, uh, the gauntlet, in order for it to be safe, right, it has to completely wrap around uh, the hand, right, so that it makes contact with the wood. So... If, if this was to get hit, right, what's happening is the gauntlet is hitting the wood before before it has a chance to crush down on my hand. So that's a critical uh, safety component, okay? The, 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 the gauntlet has to make contact with the handle so it does not crush your hand. Um, and you don't need a heavy club. I mean, if you have finger gauntlets that don't wrap around all the way what's going to happen is if you get hit there's a good chance your bones are, you know that those fingers are going to get broken okay so don't play around with your hands um fingers uh they, get, they break easy and then they don't heal easy okay a lot of times they when they heal they heal crooked so you don't want to get your fingers broken you need gauntlets that wrap around completely okay uh that's something that i take uh, pretty seriously when i'm fighting okay so um w let's talk a little bit about uh type of tournaments I've done. I've done tournaments where we were calibrated for male. I've done cal tournaments where we were calibrated for um, for full plate armor. And I've also done cal tournaments uh, or practices where, you know, where grappling was allowed, but we were not calibrated for any armor, right? So it was unarmed. Okay. So uh, one of the things, uh, let's talk about when you're using gauntlets, okay? All right. So let's say I'm using a, you know, a great sword like this and I have I have this, let's say, in my back. Okay, so if we get into a grappling situation, so let's say we get into a grappling situation, right, and I decide that this this weapon is uh, uh, not so easy to use anymore because I'm in close. Okay, while you're in the middle of fighting with somebody, it is not so easy to switch to another weapon. Right? You know, it seems easy when you're not in armor, when you're not wearing in gauntlets, but... You know, if this thing is in the sheath back here, it is not so easy to pull it out if I'm wearing armor and I have a gauntlet on. I mean, it's not that it's it, not that it's uh, impossible. It just takes longer. Okay, so normally you you could you could uh, switch out weapons pretty quickly. All right, you can switch to a shorter weapon pretty quickly if you don't have gauntlets on. If you've got gauntlets on, it slows it down. It slows it down enough that that you can you know that you can get hit, um, or you know you can. You know, you can get caught up in a lock. Um, or basically, you can lose the fight. Okay, so it slows you down enough that it is not easy to switch from one weapon to another while you're in a fight the way that you would be able to do so uh, if you were not wearing any armor, if you, specifically if you were not wearing gauntlets. Okay, so um, let's talk a little bit about half-sorting because it's a very popular uh, topic that, that people um, often talk about. Okay, so... You know, uh, half sorting is one of those things that, um, you know, I've only been able to execute it effectively against people that I probably would have been able to beat anyway with some other technique if I had not used it, okay? So if I'm going up against somebody that's good, that's confident, it's a, it's not an easy technique to use because um, what happens if I get into a half softened, sorting uh, position where I'm trying to, you know, they're, they're, you know, they're aware of what I'm doing. They know where I'm trying to go. Uh, when you're half sorting, right? I'll do it on this side so you can see. You know, it's not as fast, right? Right. If you're if you're moving around, you're trying to do these things, right? It's not as fast as if you got the weapon here and you're attacking to that side, to that side. You know, here. You know, it's that's you know the tip is moving a lot faster. 
than if you get into a half sorting position where you're trying to use this as a short spear. Okay, so that's one of the uh, uh, that's the practicality of half sorting as I have found it uh, through practical fighting. Okay, if I have a weapon, um, you know, it's just a lot faster to use this the way it was meant to be used, which is holding it by the handle uh, and striking with the striking surface. Okay. Um, you know, same deal goes with this, right? So this, is, this is a much better, if you're going to have gauntlets, this is a much better weapon to have. Um, you know, the benefit of the, of the great sword, it gives you a much longer striking surface, whereas here it concentrates everything uh, at the tip. Uh, but I have found that simply because you can have your hands a little bit further, okay, you know, this allows you effective half sorting in the sense that, okay, with this, if I half sort, I now have a very short blade, and I have, I have that in my way, okay, uh, whereas with a pull axe, okay, I have a much longer grip, that's the striking surface, Right, and with this, I can bring my hands together to make a strike. I can, I can shorten them up. Right, come in like this, strike. So you can see how I can, I can slide my hands back and forth, and strike, strike, thrust. You know, so so this is a much better weapon. Now, I mean, I, I guess I'm sort of stating the obvious, um, but all I'm saying is that that half sorting uh, with a sword uh, is a uh, you know, I, I, I mean, I think, I think that it's, it's a very glamorous type of technique. I, I think it's something that occasionally would have been used. The way I see half sorting really being used, okay, uh, if we're, if I'm actually on the battlefield, right, uh, where you know there's no such thing as a fair fight. If my buddy over there has somebody in a chokehold and he's got, let's say, a, a helmet on. Um, no, basically, I while my my buddy's holding him, I come in, I place my tip under under his helmet over here, and I basically thrust into his neck while he's being held down. Okay, so I think that is probably a more practical use of half sorting, you know, or if somebody's on the ground already, you know, being kicked by somebody else, you know, I can kind of half sort this into his groin. Okay, so again, that's a you know. Because that makes sense, right? If somebody's on the ground, somebody's already holding him down. Well, why sit here? You know, why not actually use the leverage to maybe push his leg to the side, you know, and get into the groin area, uh, you know, to an unarmored part. So, so I think that that half sorting uh, is practical, but not in the way that I think that we think it was. Okay. Um, so, uh, so th th that's those are my thoughts on uh, on half sorting. Okay. Uh, now. One of the things I want to talk to you guys about is um, the tournaments that I was actually in, right? Um, you know, um, we allowed for punching, kicking, right? All right, with the gauntlets, right? So, we, and obviously we had helmets on. So here's the thing: uh, in order to, uh, in one of the tournaments that I've done several times, um, if I mean, you have to, you know, you, in order to get a win, you have to hit somebody uh, with the weapon, right? So let's say you're using this. You had to actually hit them with the weapon or thrust them with the weapon. Okay. Now, in in some occasions when I did the tournament, uh, because we were calibrated for male, the rule was that you had to hit them three times. Okay. So basically, the first hit wasn't good enough. You had to get three hits on the body. Um, I did other tournaments where you had to get like let's say you know, two or three hits in the same spot. So it was let's say two hits to the head or two hits to the leg. You know, I, you know the idea there being that if you hit somebody. Uh, on the, at the same spot through mail, you, you got a better chance of breaking that bone or, or, or you know, getting the guy out of the fight that way. So I've done, you know, over the years, I've done lots of different rules. They're always changing the rules up. Uh, but the point is that you can play around with the rules to try and make it as realistic as, as you think uh, it should be, okay? So if somebody's in mail and you think that, hey, one strike with a, with a sword um, is not going to hurt them, or maybe three strikes or five strikes or whatever. You, so you can change the rules as you, as you need to to make it realistic. If it has to be three strikes to the same area, that's fine. Uh, as far as the punching and kicking, uh, yeah, we could punch and kick the person, um, but it, it did not uh, count as a hit, all right? Because if you're hitting somebody with a gauntlet, 
You know, it, you know, it's not the same as you're hitting them with a mace, right? Or, you know, yeah, it might hurt a little bit, but that's not a killing blow, okay? Now, uh, sometimes the exception was to the face, right? If you had a helmet, right, like this. Right. So this helmet over here has a ball grill, okay? But, um, you know, in some of the tournaments, it was assumed that this was an open face helmet and there was no ball grill over here. So if you punch somebody in the face with the gauntlet, that was a killing blow, okay? Um, in, uh, on several occasions when I did the tournament, right, uh, most of the kills that I actually got was with the weapon, okay? Uh, you know, I tried to avoid the actual grappling where I could just because um, it, it's exhausting, okay? Because remember, after you beat that guy, you know, 10 minutes later, you gotta go fight somebody else, okay? So, um, one of my thoughts when, 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 when entering into a tournament when gra where grappling is allowed, I want to avoid the grappling as much as possible. I want to kill the person with the weapon uh, with a, as little effort as possible and then move on to the next person, okay? So, um, in almost all the cases where I got into a grappling match, okay, um, the way it usually ended up, okay, is uh, as we, let's say we, we got into a grappling match, is if you get into a grappling match okay the the guy that's let's say you know obviously to grapple one guy usually has to drop the weapon okay well what quickly happens is once once you get your arms around somebody um with pretty they're gonna end up dropping their weapon as well just to get their balance to grab onto you so what usually ends up happening is now we've got two guys without weapons rolling around the ground uh you know, you know, kind of like, I mean, it's basically, that's what they're doing. They're rolling around the ground. They're, they end up not going, not doing much, right? Um, and I think uh, in some of the tournaments, if you could push the person out of the ring, right, or out of the fighting area, that counted as a kill. Um, the other th scenario that happened uh, was that if you could get to one of the weapons, right? So if you guys, you got two guys rolling around the ground, one guy gets free, gets to you know you know rolls off gets to a weapon and now all of a sudden you got the other guy that's still getting up and then strikes a killing blow okay so wh wherever that might be if it's a, if it's a um uh a tournament where we're calibrated for male let's say he hits him right over the head because you know we're, cal we're calibrating for a two pound norman nasal helm or if it's a tournament where we're calibrating for plate armor you know thrust them in the face or thrust them in an armpit or whatever but the point is that 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 person gets up, gets to a weapon while the other person is trying to get up or is, you know, trying to figure out, you know, which direction he's supposed to be fighting in. The person that gets to a weapon strikes him in an unarmored part. That's the other way that uh, the grappling uh, tournaments often end up. Now, the third way, and this has actually happened to me on several occasions, okay? Um, the rule in these tournaments is if you manage to rip off your opponent's helmet... He's automatically disqualified. Okay, so here's the thing to understand with helmets. Okay, so with the helmets, the way they usually set up is, right, they have a chin strap, right? So you have this helmet, right? And there's a chin strap over here. Let me actually put this thing on so you guys can see it. So the way this helmet goes on, let me undo this buckle. Normally I wear a coif inside of this, but for now this this will suffice. So I can get my glasses off. Okay, so I got this on, and the way this works, right, is I take this chin strap here and I tighten this up. Okay, so this chin strap over here that I tighten up over here is what's holding this helmet on my on my head. Okay. And then what happens is this comes around and it closes like that, okay? So here's the thing. With these type of straps, right, if you grab somebody, right, you get them into a headlock, what happens is because these helmets are designed to basically, these helmets are designed so that the chin strap is pulling the helmet down on your head. If you manage to get somebody in the headlock and roll this forward, right, this thing pops right off because it really... They're really not designed to stay on your head when somebody's got you in a headlock and, and is, um, 
you know, it's, it's basically trying to tear the helmet off, especially if you're in this down position here, the helmet just rolls off like that, okay? Um, so on several occasions, the way I run, I won a particular bout was I was grappling with somebody, I got him into a headlock, and basically I just pulled the helmet off, uh, and that's an automatic win because we've got gauntlets on, right? We've got these gauntlets, and if you, it, once you get somebody's helmet on, the next strike to their head is is a killing shot. So you don't need, or even even if you don't have, even if you don't have a, uh, a gauntlet, you know, with your elbows, right? If you got elbow cups or knee cup, you know, knee armor or f whatever armor you're wearing, if you strike somebody to the head once their helmet is off, um, I mean, basically you're going to knock them out of the fight. If you don't kill him, he's going to most likely be out of the fight. So. Uh, those are the three ways I have seen people usually win bouts in um, in, uh, in tournaments where grappling is allowed. Um, you either kill them with the weapon, uh, you know, the way that you're supposed to, right? Um, or you, in some cases, you push him out of the fighting area if that's a disqualif you know, if that's a disqualifier. Um, if if you get into a grappling match where you both lose, lose weapons, the person that manages to get loose or get away and get to the weapon uh, and come back and, you know, and strike that person before they're able to get up, that's, that's another way that people have won. Uh, and then the other way is if you rip the person's um, uh, helmet off and, um, you know, basically, like I said, once the helmet comes off, you know, the next, the next blow to the head with any part of your body that's armored is going to kill them, okay? Um, now, it's also worth mentioning, in a lot of these tournaments, what happened was after a minute or two of two guys just rolling on the ground, they just basically stopped the fight, separated them, gave it, said pick up your weapons, just because it got boring, okay? Because what happens is, a lot of times, if you got just two guys rolling around the ground, you know, it's just indecisive. No one's able to really get an advantage over the other. They're not able to get to their weapons, you know. Um, you know, it just becomes an exhaust, and, and both, both of them are getting exhausted at an increasing rate okay so it just becomes a very boring fight um and remember if this was a battlefield other people would be you know whichever side is winning whichever guy side has extra men you know they would be coming in to help you okay so that's not the case in the tournament because a lot of times if you're just getting into a rolling match on the ground it gets pretty boring and they just separate the guys and say okay here your weapons start all over again okay so a couple of things for you guys to um think about with regards to uh um with regards to uh, grappling uh, in medieval combat. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, in the comment section below, I'm going to put a link uh, to a tournament that I did where grappling was, uh, was allowed. Um, uh, and this was, this was many years ago. The thing is, a lot of times when I go to these tournaments or these practices, you know, I don't have somebody there to hold the camera for me. So it's, it's, it's difficult to record this. So this, this was one occasion where I had somebody there that was able to uh, record and give me the video. Um, so, uh, and I'll make note, uh, in that, in that tournament, uh, I actually win one of the bouts by ripping off somebody's helmet, okay? Uh, so, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope, you, you know, it was informative for you guys. If you're not a member of the channel, please subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.